guys, and welcome back to Chemistry 1032 instructional video. I am your host, Dr. Russell Betts, and I'll be guiding you through the buffers and blood chapter 9.8, the bicarbonate buffer system. So before we get rocking and rolling here, let's define the term buffer. A buffer is a solution that contains a weak acid and its conjugate base in certain concentrations. Now we're not going to get into the concentrations. We're not even going to worry about how to make a buffer. We're just going to say a buffer is a solution that contains a weak acid and its conjugate base. Or you can go the other way too, a weak base and its conjugate acid. It doesn't matter. You can go either way. Now, the nice thing about a buffer is it will resist the change in its pH. So, for example, a buffer at 7.5, you can add a little bit of acid to it, and it'll stay basically right around 7.5. You can add a little bit of base, it'll stay right around 7.5. It's not going to change that much, okay? That's a buffer. A buffer is a solution with a weak acid and a weak base, or conversely, a weak base and, a, and its weak acid that resists the change to pH when a little bit of acid or base is added, okay? These are buffers. Now, your blood is buffered by what is known as the bicarbonate buffering system. Now, remember bicarbonate is HCO3 negative. That's bicarbonate. So your blood is buffered that way. Now to understand this, we have to understand a few things about chemistry. Dissolve CO2 uh, produced during, you know, cellular respiration or whatever, does not last long in water. CO2, when it dissolves in water, will immediately form carbonic acid right here. And that kind of looks like uh, this. Carbonic acid looks like this. It's a carboxylic acid on both sides, okay? Now, this is a weak acid. It's a weak acid. So it's going to equilibrate to give you hydronium and bicarbonate. And this is, of course, in equilibrium, okay? So your blood has dissolved CO2 that immediately equilibrates to give you carbonic acid, which is a weak acid. That will in turn equilibrate to give hydronium and bicarbonate, and that will be in equilibrium. Okay? This is known as the bicarbonate buffering system. So far, so good? You may want to write this part down, this equation, because it's very important, and have it in front of you during the videos, because it's going to be hard to explain if you don't. Okay? Now, keep this in mind. Maintaining physiological pH with bicarbonate buffer in a situation known as homeostasis. Basically, an organism can regulate its own internal environment by adjusting factors like pH, temperature, and other things. That's called homeostasis. When everything's just running the way it's supposed to, homeostasis. Okay. Now, if you hypoventilate, which means uh, breathe at a slower rate per minute than normal, what will happen is you're not breathing out CO2 as fast as you should be. So CO2 is being forced to accumulate in your blood. Now we already know that if this concentration of CO2 goes up, Le Chatelier's principle says the equilibrium should shift to the right. Remember Le Chatelier's principle? I told you it was important. If you don't understand it, go back and review it. You must understand it. This concentration goes up. Equilibrium is forced to go to the right. And you will build up the concentration of these two things. You'll build up the concentration of those two things. Now remember, pH is the negative log or the concentration of hydronium. So if this, this thing, hydronium, is increasing in concentration, that means that this number right here is getting bigger. So the pH is getting more acidic, okay? The, your body, your blood is becoming more acidic because the hydronium concentration is going up. So the pH is becoming acidic, going down less than 7. Okay, that's an acidic pH, less than 7. Don't forget that, okay? And this is called respiratory acidosis because your blood's becoming more acidic because you're building up the concentration of this because you're not breathing out CO2 efficiently enough. It forces the equilibrium to go to products, which is where the hydronium is. That concentration goes up, pH goes down. That's acidosis. Okay? 
Now, let's just, whoop, I'm sorry, guys. Let me just back some of this stuff up here. Oops, let me just try, let me just do this. Let me just cheat a little bit. There we go. Now, we have a situation where we have respiratory alkalosis, and we know about Le Chatelier's principle, okay? So if we're building up products, if these, the concentration of that is going up, we're building up products, okay? If we want to send it back this way, we want the reaction to go the other way now. All we have to do is increase the concentration of one of the products, right? So let's increase the concentration of CO, HCO3, bicarbonate. If we increase this entity's concentration, Le Chatelier's principle says the equilibrium will go that way. It'll go back to CO2. That's Le Chatelier's principle, okay? So if we want to drive the equilibrium to the left, to the left, increase the concentration of this, and the equilibrium will go to the left. It'll decrease the concentration of acid in the body, it'll, in the blood, excuse me, it'll decrease, it'll increase, sorry, increase the pH. All right? Now, if you hyperventilate, that means you're breathing too many breaths per minute, the opposite happens. You're breathing out too much CO2. Okay? So now instead of building up acidity, you're breathing out CO2, right? So if this concentration is going down, this concentration is going down, that means the equilibrium will shift back to the left, right? That's Le Chatelier's principle. Remove this, equilibrium goes to the left, reducing the amount of hydronium. Remember, pH is the negative log of the concentration of hydronium. Okay? So if this concentration, if this stuff is reacting this way, the products are reacting to give you starting material, then these concentrations are both going down. Those concentrations are both going down. That means your pH should go up. As this goes down, pH goes up. Okay? And you're becoming more basic now. This side of the equation, or this, this part of the equation is decreasing. pH is going up. You're becoming more basic. And that's called respiratory alkalosis, which means you're becoming basic. Okay? Or you're becoming more basic than normal. All right? Now, to treat this, people generally uh, will breathe into a paper bag. Now, what does that do? That causes you to rebreathe your CO2. So you're rebreathing your CO2. So the concentration of CO2 that you're breathing in will go up slightly. And that will increase the concentration of this and force the equilibrium back the other way. That's why breathing into a bag is important. Because you want to rebreathe your own CO2. So the concentration of CO2 is going up in the air. And it'll, and it'll help, it, help the CO2 concentration in your blood increase as well. And that'll send the reaction back the other way by a Le Chatelier's principle. I told you Le Chatelier's principle is important, and I hope you believe me. Okay? So that's respiratory alkalosis, and that's hyperventilating. Now, there are chemical reactions in your body, too, that also can increase the acidity. Um, for example, diabetics will often use fatty acids as their carbon source, and that will cause the um, uh, acidic nature of your blood to increase as well. And that's called metabolic acidosis when your uh, food digestion causes your pH to change to acidity. So what do you do at that point? Again, you just increase the concentration of that to drive the equilibrium to the left. That's called Le Chatelier's principle. Okay. Metabolic alkalosis can occur with excess vomiting. So you're vomiting out all your liquids. So that's going to cause alkalosis. And that is generally treated with ammonium chloride. Remember, ammonium is NH4+. plus. So that's going to react with bases to cause your, your pH to go down a little bit. All right? So that's uh, metabolic acidosis and compared to respiratory alkalosis, uh, acidosis and alkalosis. Make sure you know these for exams, guys. This is extremely important. And uh, physiology people have told me this is important. M uh, microbiology people have told me this is important. So I'm going to tell you this is important because they want you to know it. I want you to know it. And it's very important to understand how this works, especially if you want to go into the health sciences. All right? So with that, that is the end of Chapter 9. So now I want to wish you good luck and good chemistry.